Wowzers, okay, now that, that right there was a hockey game. And I have one name that I want to shout out to the heavens for the hockey gods to hear to thank them for what they had supplied us within this game itself. Kuz Demko! And yeah, I feel like I've been waiting an eternity to say that, but it finally goes out there and accomplishes itself here today. A game where Thatcher Demko stands up to play, where Andre Kuzmenko puts in the dagger, Anthony Bavillier has a knight, and the Vancouver Canucks squeak out with two points against the Dallas Stars, the king of the Central Division right now. Vancouver has just defeated Dallas 5-4 in overtime after having a 4-2 lead and surrendering that 4-2 lead, making it 4-4. Eventually, things were tied. It went to OT. Vancouver took the cake. Very nice, very nice, very nice. I'm going to go out there and say right here that this game, sure, while it was very fun, very entertaining, and we had some really good showcases of talent throughout. You had, of course, Bavillier with the multi-point night, multiple goals, add on the assist in overtime. You had Pedersen making plays, Quinn Hughes multiple assists in this one, Thatcher Demko was fantastic. Even though there were great individual pieces of talent on display tonight, this all in all was not a good game played by Vancouver. Wait a minute, Lego, how could you say that? The Canucks had like four goals on 18 shots or whatever it was, and Jake Ottinger, is that not a good performance to go out there and put for the fans in Dallas? You know, try to take away that hometown momentum? And sure, very well, you could say that the performance of production, you had the shots and you had the goals, that was good. But everything else, man, the Dallas Stars really did just have themselves a shooting gallery on Thatcher Demko tonight, and Demko stood on his head to the best of his ability. He got beaten by a few breakaways, he got beaten by a few give-and-goes that just completely waltzed around the Canucks defenders there. Sure, Riley Stillman, tank commander, isn't here anymore, but that doesn't mean the Canucks defense is all of a sudden great. You still have guys like Tyler Myers, Kyle Burrows, Noah Juleson, who else was in the lineup here today? Uh, Willannon, Hughes, and whoever the last guy was. It's a pretty bad decor, just all things considered. And ultimately, this team and its defensive play was not helping out Thatcher Demko in the slightest at all. Multiple breakaways, Demko had to make saves on a few of those. Some of them he let in because, you know, they're breakaways. But overall, just defensively, the Canucks were not on their A game in this one. And that's kind of to be expected. The Dallas Stars are first in the Central for a reason. They're a very high-scoring team. They've got multiple guys who have been putting the puck in the back of the net and who have been producing big numbers as a result. You've got the Robertsons, you've got the Pavelskis and the Hintzes out there on that line, and then you have yourselves the other lines. You've got guys like... Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, they're all doing pretty all right this season, all things considered. And, you know, Vancouver's defense was never really hailed as a good part of their team this season. So having the defensive showcase that they did, not really surprising, but still kind of disappointing to see. The Canucks welcome Thatcher Demko back in open arms this season by showing off the same defensive coverage in front of him that you could very well debate led to his slow start earlier on in the year. Now, you could definitely say as well at the opposite side that, hey, Demko was hurt earlier on in the year. Maybe that's why his numbers were not all too great. But in this one, Thatcher Demko stands on his head. He makes a boatload of saves, and I think the Canucks... Let's go out there and pull up the shots. I didn't have this open before making this video. I was just too excited. I had to record and talk about this game real quick here. The Dallas Stars had 38 shots, and Thatcher Demko stopped 34 of them. He had himself an 895 save percentage, which isn't great on paper, but when you look at the quantity of breakaways this guy had to face, it becomes a lot better to look at. Jake Ottinger, on the other hand, he had 21 shots against, he let in 5 goals, 762 save percentage. Not a great night for him, all things considered, but a lot of these goals were pretty good ones too. Tips in front by Sheldon Dries, one time bang ins by Andre Kuzmenko, or excuse me, not Kuzmenko, by Bavillier, the one-time deflection by Kuzmenko, too. This was a pretty good game, all things considered, from an entertainment standpoint, but the Canucks definitely need to work on their defense if they want to maybe steal a few more points here and there from other teams over the next few games. I would be okay if they didn't do that because I kind of want Connor Bedard, but either way, an entertaining hockey game is never something to be disappointed by. 
This game starts out with its scoring with Anthony Bavillier. We talked about this earlier on, but he gets things going. one nothing. three minutes into the frame, as Elias Pettersson throws the puck towards the middle and it bounces off to two Dallas Stars guys before going over to Jake Ottinger, who kind of lets the puck bounce off of him, and it goes a little bit to the side where Bavillier is right there all by himself. He just kind of whacks at it, and it goes up and over the shoulder of Ottinger. one nothing Vancouver. Give it five minutes later, and the Canucks, while on the power play, end up giving a very, very easy breakaway to Jamie Benn. He comes in on goal. He tries to go five-hole in Thatcher Demko, but Demko actually stops it. However, because Jamie Benn was going with such a high amount of speed, Demko ends up backing into his net too quickly, and he can't stop in time. He crosses the line with the puck in between his legs, and it counts as a goal. It's 1-1. Shorthanded goal scored by Dallas. That's the 11th shorthanded goal the Canucks have given up all season. But just a few seconds later on the same power play with the second unit this time, it's Connor Garland on the far right point who rips a shot towards the goal, and it's Sheldon Dries in front who tips it in, makes a 2-1 Vancouver, and the Canucks don't stop there. As with five minutes to go, you have yourselves Quinn Hughes, who throws the puck up to one Atiuratu, who has been in the line at the past little while here. He comes in over the line, stops up, hard pivot, opens up a passing lane into the middle, throws it over to Pod Colson, who dekes around his man, he shoots, and he scores. Beautiful goal scored by the future of Vancouver. Quinn Hughes to Atiuratu, the Vasily Pod Colson. Mwah! Chef's kiss, beautiful stat line right there. You love to see it. And it was a very nice goal as well. Pod Colson with the snipe after dangling out the guy challenging him. It's 3-1 Vancouver at the end of the first, but the second is where Dallas starts to really get things going. Evgeny Dadanov, recently acquired from the Montreal Canadiens, gets a goal. He scores a very nice little play where he dangles the pants out of Thatcher Demko, fakes the backhand, goes quickly back to the forehand, and Demko is out of position. Again, another breakaway-esque situation that really shouldn't have happened, but it did. Thanks, Thatcher Demko. Then you had yourselves Bavillier a few minutes later, who brought the Canucks lead back up to 4-2. Quinn Hughes this time throws the puck through the slot, and Bavillier is right there to receive it after it bounces off a Dallas Stars skate. He whacks at it, and it goes up and over the shoulder of Ottinger. That's another multi-goal game for Anthony Bavillier since joining the Vancouver Canucks. Bo Horvat who? Anthony Beauvillier instead. I know he's playing with Kuzmanko and Petey, which is probably a good contributor to his goal production right now, but we're going to use this as an opportunity to just say, hey, he's doing pretty well. How about that? The end of the period, though, is not all too great for Vancouver, as Rupe Hints gives the Stars the goal to get within one. It's a power play marker assisted by Ben and Pavelski. They pretty much force a two-on-one, as the Stars break in with some pretty good speed. They do a nice little give-and-go play to get the puck around Tyler Myers, and then they find the open man on the side, and Thatcher Demko can't make the save. It's 4-3 Vancouver at the end of the second. The third gets underway, and Niels Longfist makes it 4-4. He receives the puck at the top of the slot, walks in, shoots it, and scores it. I mean, look, the Canucks had been giving up so much zone time and opportunity for Dallas, it was bound to catch up to them here. And towards the middle and ending parts of the third, you really started to see that manifest itself too. Although I will give the Canucks credit, they did start to bounce back with some momentum towards the end of the third period. But it was all for naught as the overtime period inevitably gets started, and the Canucks literally score on the first shot of the game. Quinn Hughes sends a pass up to Anthony Bavillier, who just comes off of the bench. Bavillier kind of receives the puck a little bit weird. It bounces so hard off his stick that he has to reach back and grab it again. But while he's reaching back and grabbing it, he's actually crossed the blue line. He pulls the puck back to his forehand. He comes right in, throws it into the middle, and it's Andre freaking Kuzmenko who buries it and deflects it by Ottinger, making it 5-4. However, after a very extensive video review process where they argue the philosophy of quote-unquote having control of the puck, there were a lot of Dallas Stars fans in the building saying no goal, that shouldn't have been a goal because when Bavillier touched the puck upon the Quinn Hughes pass, it bounced away from him, he was already over the line, and he had to reach back to get it, is that offside? It should be. And then there was the video review, which confirmed the idea that says that, hey, when Bavillier received the puck and he had to reach back to get the puck, that entire time he had possession of the puck. It's fair to say he had control of the puck, which is sort of the natural 
response, I guess you could say. There was the similar Kale McCarr play in the playoffs last year against Edmonton that kind of ruffled a few feathers in the NHL community, but Bavillier's goal counts. I personally felt like it should have counted because I thought that in my mind's eye, he has control when he's reaching back to get the puck and pull it back over the blue line, but who cares? It's not Bavillier who gets the goal. It's Kuzmenko. Bavillier just sets the guy up, and Andre Kuzmenko on a night where Thatcher Demko steps up to play big time, ends up getting the game-winning goal and helping my fantasy team because we are in the finals now. I'm in the final two matchup. I'm in the championship finals going up against the guy that has been very, very good this entire season. And, uh, yeah, I need all the points that I can get. So, Kuzdemko, thank you so much for your service here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks versus the Dallas Stars. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.